All right, this video is uh, called Chuck Baldwin is a Liar uh, from Liberty Fellowship Ministries in Montana. I've already done a video on this guy. Um, you know, I explained that the reason that he's doing this is he's defending his replacement theology and his uh, basically preterist look towards the Bible, basically thinking that prophecy is all done, uh, pretty much, and saying that the body of Christ replaced the bloodline seed of Israel. Two complete lies. Uh, I'm sorry to say, but dude is a straight-up heretic when it comes to these subjects. And I'm going to show you the verse that he uses. He says, okay, so what he says is that there is no Antichrist, as in the singular. And he says that John only mentions Antichrist, the word Antichrist, four times. And he, he actually uses this verse and doesn't actually explain what it's saying. So I'm going to show you two instances, three instances uh, where the Antichrist is a singular person. So this is in 1 John chapter 2, verse 18. Little children, it is the last time, and as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come. That Antichrist shall come. Singular. Singular Antichrist there, okay? Let me read it again. Little children, it is the last time, and as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come. Antichrist, not Antichrists with an S. Antichrist shall come. Because John also mentions that anybody who denies that Jesus came in the flesh is an Antichrist. But in this verse, he says that Antichrist shall come, pointing to a singular person, not a plurality of people with an S. Then it goes on to say this. Even now are there many antichrists with an S, whereby we know that it is the last time. So you see how he delineates the two differences between the antichrist that shall come and many antichrists. See that? Why doesn't Chuck explain that? Because he's trying to he's trying to hide it and he's trying to protect his replacement theology and preterism. So again, here in the book of Revelation, clearly we see the Bible pointing to a single Antichrist person here. Revelation chapter 13, verse 16. And he causeth all, he, singular, male, he causeth all. Both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. Speaking about the mark of the beast. Now, another place where Chuck Baldwin takes the scripture and completely mutilates it, takes it out of context. I don't even know what he was talking about. <clears throat> Second Thessalonians chapter 2, start at verse 3. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin... Be revealed the son of perdition. Now, clearly, that is pointing to a single Antichrist. And what Chuck does is he takes it, he just mutilates it, makes it, I don't even know what he was talking about. I mean, you cannot be confused with stuff like this. It is like third grade, kindergarten, easy to read, simple stuff. But when you have a guy like Chuck trying to protect replacement theology and preterism, these guys will say anything. They will take something and make it say, try to make it say something that you don't even know what he's talking about. And you can tell Chuck Baldwin, Chuck Baldwin, okay, is prideful. Just look at the way he preaches. He's always yelling, always angry. Every sermon, every single one, the guy can't just get up there. And communicate a message. He has to yell and scream every time. I understand we all can get mad, righteous anger. I get it. But every time, if Paul is our pattern, does Paul do that? Paul only uses, I've said this in other videos about other people. Paul only uses exclamation points a couple times throughout his epistles. So he's our pattern, right? 1 Timothy 1.16, Philippians 3.17. So Paul wasn't yelling and screaming at everybody. He didn't need to. See, you don't need to yell and scream if you've got the proper information. As long as you just communicate proper information, there's no need to yell and scream. You don't have to. See, when, when you're doing that, 
you're actually showing your weakness in your argument. See, because the truth will make you free. So if it's the truth, there's no need to bang it into somebody's head. Head, You just let people know about it and you plant the seed and God gives the increase. But you could tell Chuck Baldwin that he is prideful and he is working in the flesh a lot. That's flesh. That is the flesh. When you have to take scripture and change it around to make it fit your view on what you want to believe and what other people believe and totally mutilate it and totally make it so complicated, not understanding that everybody's lost, then that's that's the result of working in the flesh. And that's the result of being prideful. They come hand in hand. Pride and the flesh come hand in hand. Not to say that Chuck hasn't put out some good things. He has. But regardless, this is a big issue. So the the thing that I really hate to see is somebody lying at, lying about 1 John 2.18 as to what it says and what it doesn't say. And also taking other verses and making them say, just completely throwing them out of context and out of everything. And this is my video to Chuck Baldwin. He is straight up lying and he is twisting scripture. So I have respect for some of the work that he does, but on this, I got no love, no love.